Hello and welcome to St. John's Online. My name is Esther Pryor and I'm the vicar of St. John's Church in Egham. It's a real joy to welcome you to our Lent Midday Prayers. We are reading through the book of Lamentations. If you haven't seen the earlier studies, it might be worth going back so you can listen to the introduction and where we've got to in the story so far. It's always a privilege, isn't it, to press the pause button in the middle of the day and spend time in God's word and in prayer. So let's take a moment to enter into this space, to invite the Spirit of God and to welcome the work of Jesus and his Spirit in our lives. we enter into this ancient tradition of keeping a holy Lent. Brothers and sisters in Christ, since early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's passion and resurrection and prepared for this by a season of penitence fasting and generosity. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness that is proclaimed in the gospel and so grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord. So I invite you to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting and generosity, and by reading, meditating and acting on God's holy word. What powerful words, what a winsome invitation Let's pray together for the grace to keep Lent faithfully in these ways. Keeping in mind the central theme, which is that we want to grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord. Amen. And so we come to our reading and we're reading through the book of Lamentations. We're in chapter two, picking up from where we left off yesterday from verse seven. The Lord has rejected his own altar he despises his own sanctuary. He has given Jerusalem's palaces to her enemies. They shout in the Lord's temple as though it were a day of celebration. The Lord was determined to destroy the walls of beautiful Jerusalem. He made careful plans for her destruction. Then did what he had planned. Therefore, the rampants and wars have fallen down before him. Jerusalem's gates have sunk into the ground. He has smashed their rocks and bars. Her kings and princes have been exiled to distant lands. Her law has ceased to exist. Her prophets receive no more visions from the Lord. 
the leaders of beautiful Jerusalem sit on the ground in silence. They are clothed in sackcloth and throw dust on their heads. The young women of Jerusalem hang their heads in shame. Beautiful Jerusalem lies in ruins, that holy city. And what is hard to fathom, to get our heads around, is that the destruction is at the hand of God. God himself plans and executes its destruction. And so we sit with the discomfort of knowing our God as judge, the righteous judge who cannot tolerate sin brings judgment on beautiful Jerusalem who has clothed herself with sin and not heeded the warnings from her God. And so God himself has rejected his own altar. He has turned his back on his own sanctuary. The place where only priests could enter is now overrun by enemies. The place that used to resound with his praise is now filled with the shouts of the enemy as they celebrate their victory. As hard as it is to fathom, it is the Lord himself who has determined to destroy Jerusalem. You notice that his sovereignty remains intact. It is he who has laid out careful plans for her destruction. Jerusalem has fallen down before him. As one who is no longer able to stand, her gates have sunk to the ground and she now lounges there unprotected. Her locks are broken. Her kings and her princes have been exiled to distant lands. She has no leadership anymore. Even the law which had set her apart from other nations, the very law that had marked her out as belonging to God, even that has ceased to exist. As for her prophets, well, they see no more visions from God. It is a picture of utter desolation, where not just the physical trimmings of beauty have gone, but it is also Ichabod, the glory of the Lord has departed. I feel the weight of the desolation as I read these words, as I reflect on these words. What to do? Where do we go from here? The leaders that are left, they sit on the ground in silence, clothed in sackcloth, and they throw dust on their heads as they mourn. As for the young women, well, the young women of Jerusalem hang their heads in shame. What do we do? What do we do when we read of this desolation? When we see Jerusalem lying in ruins? We reflect, don't we? And as we come to the realization that it is for his sin that God's judgment has come. 
we stand not in judgment over her because we recognize our own sin. Rather, we sit alongside her and we too mourn for our sin. We too hang our heads in shame. We recall how our hearts have wandered from God. We recall how we have scorned the possibility of his judgment. He's too full of love to judge, we say. We forget how despicable sin is to him. He hates it. We remember maybe that we've made our God soft and cuddly. And we remember that sin brings with it judgment. We remember that the wages of sin is death. And so we sit alongside the leaders of desolate Jerusalem. And we too mourn. We too hang our heads in shame. But it's as if the Spirit comes and raises our head so that we can see Jesus coming with healing and salvation in his wings. He comes and he offers himself as a sin offering. He takes upon himself all our sorrows, all our punishment. He raises us up from the dust. He restores our beauty and he covers our shame. We know that our place, the place that we deserve is on that desolate floor with shame as our mantle. But in Jesus, we are clothed in royal robes that we do not deserve. And we receive them with gratitude as he lifts our heads and restores our beauty and covers our shame. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen. The opening sentences of our prayers echo this idea that God lifts up all who are bowed down. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. Thank you, Lord, for the truth of your word. And so God of love, hear the cry of those who yearn for love. We pray for fractured families broken homes for those who feel neglected, unwanted, alone. God of love, we pray that they may know your love. We pray to you, O God of justice, Hear the cry of those who yearn for justice, those who are persecuted and oppressed, exploited, ill-treated and broken. Those who can easily sit alongside the leaders of Jerusalem, mourning, clothed in sackcloth, sprinkled with dust because of sin done to them. God of justice, may they know your justice. We come to you, O God of peace. Hear the cry for those who yearn for peace, for shalom those in battle zones 
and broken states. Those who are frightened, fearful and anxious. Those with nowhere to turn. Those longing for shalom. May they know your peace. God of healing, hear the cry of those who yearn for healing, whether physical or spiritual, those who are hurting, weakened, depressed. We pray for those on our hope to, in depression course at the moment. May they know deep healing. May your grace run deep. We call on you as the God of mercy. Hear the cry of those who yearn for mercy. Those who are convicted and in need of your grace. The contrite, humble, bowed down. Those of us who know we are guilty and need to be washed clean by the blood of Jesus. May we know your mercy. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy, for grace, for peace, for healing, for love. I love the Lord, for he turned his ear towards me. And I will call on him for as long as I live. Friends, let's gather our prayers into one. Pray together as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, may you know the peace of God, the love of God, the justice of God, the healing and mercy of God, this day and all days. Amen. It's a joy to be part of the team at St. John's bringing you our readings from lamentations throughout this Lent. Do join us for the next installment tomorrow. If you want to find any episodes that you might have missed or any of our broadcasts, you can find them on our YouTube channel, St. John's Egham. For now, again, I repeat, may God bless you and thank you so much for joining us. <music>